Hello there and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be unboxing this LG computer monitor. This is the 22MK400. So this is badged as a 22 inch but it also says on LG's site it's a 21.5 inch. So yeah, somewhere about there. Uh, monitor. This is a 1080p, so 1920 by 1080 at up to 75 hertz display. I've got a pair of these that I purchased for a friend's PC. At the time of purchase these on Amazon were around about £125. So this is just going to be a quick unboxing and overview video, looking at what's in the box and just the stand and the inputs and stuff on the display. And that's it, we're not going into too much detail here. So on the outside of the box, you can see it's got FHD, flicker safe, well mountable on-screen control, is all it really touts there. On the back of the box, we've got pretty much the same thing. It says don't open here because this is the side where the screen is, you open it from the other side. On the end of the box, just got an LG logo, same information again, not a lot really. On the other side of the box, we've got some details there including the model, so it's a 22MK400HB, this particular variant. And that's pretty much it for the outside. Now let's open the box up. I'm just going to slip that tape there and there. There we go, and then we'll slit it across here. Be careful not to go too deep, but as I say, make sure you open the side, because it's not got the display on. In the box. The first things that we can see are the stand and some cables. Some assembly required by the looks of it. So they include a HDMI cable. So that's a standard HDMI to HDMI. Probably around about two meters length looking at it. We've got a power supply plug. So this runs off a, a low voltage and this is a wall adapter. And it is 19 volts output. You can see the at 0.84 amps. Probably got a standard DC jack connector on it. There's the power connector. It's one of those DC jacks with the little pin in the middle. I'll get that out in a minute. We've also got a little bag here with two screws in. They're probably for the stand. These energy card things that they always include. We've got a actual loose CD. That is the owner's manual apparently. Uh, I don't really get why they're still including them and loose, but... Hey ho, it seems like a waste to me because nobody's really going to do anything with them. We've also got some United Kingdom uh, fault and warranty terms specific to the area. External power supply adapter information. So that gives you all the models and various voltages and currents and things for the different regions. Then there's a load of QR codes for some reason. I'm not sure what the deal is with those there's a lot of them though they'd like and this is an a3 sheet yeah this is legitimately an a3 sheet full of qr codes i don't know what is going on there then we've got the little contents overview basically i'll probably also show you how to do the stand in here there you go it shows you the uh Stand assembly there. There's the connection instructions. And then this is a back to front booklet. Or is it? No. Oh, this is safety instructions in lots of languages. Right, so we'll throw all this back in the box here for the minute. Here's the stand base section itself. That's what stands on the desk there. You can see it's got a screw already in it, captive. You'll need a flat blade screwdriver to assemble that piece. Then you've also got the actual bracket arm that the monitor goes on. So let's take this out and have a look. So that's where those two screws from the other bag will go. This will hook into the back of the screen. This goes into the stand base here. So you can actually put that in now. It's sort of a thumb screw that you can turn with your thumb. But I would advise you uh, knit this up with a screwdriver. Let's take the actual display itself out now. So 
So the box is oversized. There's a generous amount of packaging around the edges, so it should protect it in shipping. Because Amazon did actually send this um, just in this box with a shipping label stuck on the outside. Let's just pick the display out. It's really rather light. And the display is in this sort of sleeve, wrap around sleeve. I'm just going to slide it out of this onto its back, like so. You can see the display looks fine, there's no cracks or damage that are visible anyway. On the back here, we've got the model information serial number, voltage, etc. Manufactured 10 2021. This is February 2022 when I'm recording this. We've got here the DC input for the power, a HDMI input, a headphone output and a diesel bin. So if you connect this up via HDMI, the audio going to the monitor will come out of the headphones output. You can't carry uh, audio over VGA. So let's put the stand on this anyway. I'm going to lie the screen down on a flat surface. These top pieces here will hook in like so. So move this forward a touch just so I can fit the stand on. These hook in here, down there, and then I'm going to put the two screws in. Just to be different, these are Phillips crosshead screws. So let's get a appropriate screwdriver and put those in. So there we go, the stand's now fitted if we stand this up. So now the stand's on. You can see you've got quite a bit of adjustment tilt-wise like that. It'll go quite far back. That is a rather extreme angle, really. And forwards like that. It could even come downhill a touch. It does actually look there like it would swivel, but it does not appear to swivel. It's fixed straight, so you'd have to move the actual stand to adjust the monitor that way. On the bottom here, under the LG logo, we've also got a button and joystick to actually operate through the menus. Let's plug it in and have a look at the menu. Connecting the power supply now. And that's it. It's come on straight away. We've got a no signal message. You can see all the corners and everything. The display is fine. So now if we press this button, I'm assuming it will open the menu. Yep, there we go. So we've got the little cylindrical menu here. You can then move it left for input, at which point we can cycle through them here. So I'm going to put it onto HDMI. And you can also knock that again, go back to input, it's on HDMI now. Back again. If you press it upwards, it powers the monitor off. And I'm assuming if you just press it, it comes back on. Yep. We can't access the picture mode and settings until I actually connect an input. So let me find something to plug into this. Okay, so if we right click the desktop and go into display settings, it'll take you to the Windows settings here. And if we scroll down, we can see that this second display it set itself to 1920 by 1080 and um, this is just connected to my laptop by a display port to HDMI cable but if we go to advanced display settings you can see that the refresh rate here is only set to 59.940 Hz so it's not running at the refresh rate it could do so if we change that here 74.97 whatever Hz that puts it up to the almost 75 Hz that this monitor supports so there we go and now you can back out of those settings and your display should be running at 75 hertz. Other things that may be worthy of note and specs that you may want to know include that this has a one millisecond gray to gray response time. It has a contrast ratio quoted of 600 to one typical and 450 to one minimum. It supports Radeon Free Sync, which automatically adjusts the refresh rate of the monitor to match the output from a graphics card, which is useful for in gaming so you don't get tearing across the screen. Also has reading modes, crosshair, on-screen control, a black stabilizer, etc. So let's have a look in the menu now that we've got an input. I'm going to picture mode first. Custom is what it's on by default. Okay, we don't mind changing the power settings. That's reader, photo, cinema, color weakness, and game. You're probably going to want to put it on game if you're using this for gaming, which kind of goes without saying. Other settings we've got, 
are brightness, which is set to 85, volume set to 30 by default, so I'm assuming there's built-in speakers. Input is set to HDMI. Picture, picture mode game, you can adjust the picture, which takes us back to where we were. Super resolution plus. Not sure what that does, but we'll leave that off by default. Game adjust, so response time. You can change your response time here to faster, fast, normal or off. So that will decrease latency. The quoted one millisecond response time, grey to grey, is actually when set to faster in this menu. So you may want to enable that if you want the fastest response time. FreeSync is turned off by default. You can turn that on in here. We've also got black stabiliser and a crosshair. So you can put a crosshair on the display. So you can see now that has enabled a little cheat red crosshair there in the centre of the screen. And there's a few that you can choose from. We'll just turn that off for now. You can do a picture reset there. And you've also got general settings, so English language, energy saving, which you can change the settings here for the luminance level. Automatic standby, so it will automatically go to sleep after four hours in the default configuration. You can turn that off or increase that to six or eight hours. OSD lock, that will lock the on-screen display on, I would imagine. Information. This just gives us the details about the connection that's coming in, so we can see the resolution is 1920 to 80, 75 Hz. Total power on time is zero hours. The serial number and the model. And then we can also do a full factory reset here. And that pretty much covers everything in the menus. This has been a quick look and overview at the 22MK400 22 inch monitor. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you've got any questions, Put them in the comment section down below and I'll try and answer them. And get subscribed to my channel for future random unboxings and technology videos like this one. Thanks for watching.